Hello and welcome. I've got an awesome problem for you here. And before I get into it, I think you should pause the video and look at these shapes for yourself and maybe write down something you notice or something you're wondering. Take a moment, give it a shot. All right, so in this problem, we're looking at hexagons. And a hexagon, of course, has six sides. It's a regular hexagon, so each side is the same distance. I don't know what that distance is. We'll just call the distance one unit. Right? The unit could be anything, miles, inches, whatever. But let's just be, keep it simple here. Let's call it one unit of something. And notice that here we have one hexagon, and then in the next figure we have two hexagons. So what could we look at? We could look at area, and the area would be doubled. But I want to look at perimeter, and perimeter is the distance around the outside of a shape. Notice I'm not counting these sides that are hidden in the middle, just the outside. So if we count those ones up, first we have a perimeter of 6, and now we have a perimeter of 10. And then when we take three hexagons and put them together, what happens there to the perimeter, right? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 for the perimeter. And we can make a little table of this, and the goal is to predict um, the perimeter for any figure in this sequence. Can we predict the perimeter for any figure in this sequence? So to make sense of that, Let's call the figure we start with figure 0. And I know at first you might want to call it figure 1, and you could. I mean, you can call it figure 1 half or figure, figure negative 2 or whatever you want. Um, it's still going to be the starting figure. But by calling it the 0 figure, this problem becomes a lot more manageable. Then here, this would be figure 1. And then, of course, as you've probably guessed, figure two, and so forth and so on. So let me rephrase the problem because I have might have blabbered a bit here. The goal is to figure out, pun, oops, good pun, sorry, not to figure, well, to figure the, for the figure, that's a little confusing, to, to predict the perimeter for any given figure in this sequence. So to help you do this, uh, in the description, there are some hexagons that you can print out and cut out yourself. And there's a table to help you make sense of this. And the table just has simply the figure number that you're analyzing in one column and the perimeter in the other column. And I think what you'll love about this problem as we get into it is that there are so many ways to solve it. And of course, regardless of the approach, we get to the same answer. So before I talk to you about some of the methodology I see in this problem, why don't you play with those shapes and see what you can find? All right, let's get started. Um, so I've reduced the size of the figures here so we can represent them a little bit more quickly. And I'm gonna deal with this problem in three different ways. I'm gonna make a little table here, figure number and perimeter. And I will say that when I solve this problem, I'll, I'll finish the video by showing the way I dealt with it, I can not really think of it in any of the three ways I'm about to show you. Uh, I got these three ways from an article that I'm linking to in the description section. Um, but I love these three um, algorithms. I've got to show them to you. So in figure zero, the perimeter is six, right? There are six sides to that hexagon. So one approach in, in the second, in the next figure, excuse me, figure one, is to say, okay, how did this original hexagon change when we um, place it next to another? Well, what happened, right? The, originally we had six, then we lose a side here, so we take one away, and then we still add on these other five sides, right? So it's really six, the original six, minus one, we lose a side in the perimeter because that side's hidden, and then we add five. Okay, now I'm not gonna simplify this. The tendency is always to then subtract or add right away, but we're looking for pattern and structure here, not just the numbers themselves. So in our next figure, figure two, again, uh, we have our previous expression, six minus one plus five, Right, that deals with this part of the figure here. But then again, we lose a side, right? So here, this side's lost, and then we add five more sides again. So this goes on and on each time. And then in figure three, again, we have our same expression, six minus one plus five, minus one plus five, and then that takes care of this piece right here. It's the same three hexagons from the previous step. And then minus one plus five again. Now, what's wonderful about this approach is that at first you're like, ah, well, where is this going to get me? Uh, but for any figure that we're given, let's call it figure n, what do we notice here? We always start with 6, right? And then, if you notice, 
In the third figure, we subtracted 1 three times, and we added 5 three times. Isn't that really cool? Like we, For the third figure, we subtracted three ones and added three fives. For the second figure, we subtracted two ones and added two fives. Oops. I'll, I'll color code it consistently, sorry. So we're subtracting two ones and then adding two fives. So in the first figure, then, we're subtracting one one and adding a five. And this even works for the zero figure because there we're not subtracting any ones or, any, or adding any fives. And now what this does, it allows us to connect the figure number to the perimeter. Because for any figure number we have, we subtract n ones. So sorry, my color coding is a little off there. So six minus one times n. And then we add, right? We add n fives plus five n. So just to reiterate what's happening here, and this simplifies, of course, to six plus four n our final expression, and we can test that in a moment. Um, all we did was say for the third figure, we add three fives. So for the nth figure, right, we add five n's. Five times n is five n's. And then we subtract three ones in the third figure. So for any figure, we subtract the, the n amount of ones. And just to show that this actually works, our perimeters, again, were six. I'll write them over here. 6, 10, well actually I'll write them over here, that wouldn't make any sense, sorry. Uh, the perimeters are 6, 10, if you count this one, 14, and then 18. If we plug in uh, 3 for n, right, to this formula, we should get 18 for a perimeter, because we're saying the perimeter always equals 6 plus 4n. So if we plug in 3 for n, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 6 is 18. This gives us the correct perimeter. And I'll leave it to you, but you could test them for all of them. All right, so my plan was to show you uh, at least two other ways of solving this problem, as well as my own. But clearly, I'm over 7 minutes right now, and that would just take way too long. Um, so I want to follow that in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. And check out the article in the description. Uh, that was my inspiration for showing you this. Thanks.